it has been such a weird weather year so if you've never seen a pawpaw tree this is a pawpaw tree i planted these in 2016 and this one's only about three feet tall so pawpaws grow extremely slow but they grow very well they really like shaded areas so if you got like areas along a wood line like i've got here they're a great place to plant pawpaws um, anyways, so what I wanted to go over though was when these get ready to start fruiting They have these like they look like a flower In a way if I can get this thing to focus They kind of look like a flower And then I'll never get where you can see up in there But up inside there, let me see if I can get this to focus better up inside there is a, and it's not going to let me turn my, my work. Up inside there, you can kind of see it there, is a green, what they call a, I believe it's pe pestle or pe petal, pestle I believe it is. Uh, here we go with the chemo memory issues. Anyways, what happens is, a pawpaw is pollinated by a specific type of fly. Now, that fly isn't going to just come here and find this pawpaw tree. You have two options. The most common option is to lay a dead fish near your pawpaw tree. I know that sounds crazy, but something about that fly that pollinates a pawpaw tree drives them crazy and they will show up and pollinate your pawpaw trees the other thing you can do when you get more than one of these is you can come out here with like a q-tip and scrape scrape the inside of there so it gets the pollen on it and then transfer that to another flower and that will pollinate your pawpaw so that it fruits and this pawpaw right here, it's got one, two, three, four flower buds on it. And I've got another pawpaw right here. Looks like it's going to have, there's a one right there. You can barely see it if I stick my finger in behind it. There's one flower right there starting to form. There's another one up here starting to form. So this one's got, and there's another one right there starting to form. That one's got three. It looks like there's a few more on some other branches over here also. And then we got the pawpaws down here. These are all different varieties, by the way. I don't see any on this one. There's a long story behind that one. I think I've covered in some other videos. These back here actually had a lot on there. And then we got a really bad cold spell. And I think they all got ruined. I don't see any left on it now. Oh, I see one right there. Now the, the leaves look different than the, the fruit. Let me show you if I can get that to come into focus. That's a leaf right there. So they're kind of narrow and pointed where the fruiting parts, they start out as a ball and then they expand into what looks like a flower. There's actually, oh, there's a second one back there. Uh, where's it at? Right there. You can kind of tell the difference here. So on the right, you've got your flower, and there you've got your leaf. So pawpaws are really easy to tell. And let me see if I can find where, like when, when they're first starting to flower, it's real obvious. See how... I can get it to come into focus. See how that is laying flat against the limb? And then you go down a little bit. And there is one that's kind of like, looks like a ball. So the flat ones are leaves. The little balls are going to be fruiting flowers. So it doesn't look like I lost my whole entire crop on all of them. 
that I did lose quite a bit because this one here specifically had probably 20 or 30 flowers on it. And now all I see is leaves. Man, that kind of sucks. But the fu funny thing is, is that they really take about seven or eight years before they will actually produce fruit. So if I get anything out of these this year, I'd be happy because it's probably what been six years, seven, seven years. And uh, last year, this one actually started to produce pawpaws. They actually started into the growth stage. So it actually had a small pawpaw fruit on it. And then we got a late frost and it killed it. <laughs> and I'm kind of glad in a way because I was still doing the cancer recovery. And one of the things that I told one of my friends is that, you know, all during the cancer treatment, I kept saying, I can't die yet. I've not even tried my pawpaws. And then the same year that I said, the following year that I said that in the spring, they started to produce fruit. And, you know, things were still kind of uncertain at that point. So I'm kind of glad I did lose those. Because now I think that the cancer recovery is at a point where the doctors are less concerned about it coming back. You know, the two-year and the five-year checkpoints are big deals, and my two-year one's coming up. I don't know if they go by when I was diagnosed or when they started treatment. So I was diagnosed in May, and I started treatment in November. But either way, my two years is just right around the corner. Time sure flies when you've got cancer and chemo brain, uh, which is something I keep telling other people too, especially like my coworkers. When I look back, like I still remember 2019, I was over there building the goat barn. And uh, it seems like since then, and, and I'm not exaggerating, it's like I blink my eyes and it was 2022. I don't really remember much of 2020 or 2021 at all. You know, the, the cancer recovery things started getting better this year but this year kind of started out bad it, it didn't really start getting better until just here the last few weeks and uh a, a big part of that's because of my thyroid issues and uh it's really taken them a whole entire year to get that figured out and they still don't really have it figured out i got to go in for checkups next week matter of fact blood work and see check my thyroid levels and probably get it increased again but anyways i know a lot of people don't know a lot about paul paul's um, I'll go ahead and go into this. I wasn't going to, but probably should. I've covered it in other videos. Paul Paul's is North America's largest tropical fruit. Now think about that. Largest tropical fruit. You can find it all up and down the Appalachian region. You can find it out west in California. People have planted them out there. But it's the largest tropical fruit. It has... A taste like if you a lot of people says it has like the consistency of a banana or custard um, it does have a citrusy kind of banana type taste and the only way that I know how to describe it is if a banana and a mango had a baby that is a pawpaw now They've been here since uh, probably the world existed. And the reason why nobody knows about them is because of the way that they, they mature and ripen. So they mature and ripen on the tree. And the minute they fall, you've got about a couple hours to pick them up. But from the time you pick them up, you've probably only got a couple hours to eat them. So that's why you can't find them in stores, why most people don't know about them. Um, there's been a lot of research. Kentucky University is big. They have a massive pawpaw um, orchard where they've been studying pawpaws for years. And they've done a lot of research on ways to, uh, I guess, improve the pawpaws to a point where um, they will store longer. But that's a slow process because... If you find them wild, usually what happens is you could be walking through the woods and if you find a pawpaw on the ground, if it just fell two hours ago, the ants have already ate it up. And I went to a hiking video 
uh, I don't know if I uploaded it or not, but there was a hiking video where I'd run out of food and I'd been out of food for a couple of days and very serious situation as a long distance hiker. Um, but I run across pawpaws that were on the ground and you could kind of tell there was 10 or 12 pawpaws on the ground and half of them were already eaten by the ants or being consumed by the ants and the other half they were just getting started on they'd broke like the skin of the pawpaw and i'm gonna be honest with you i hadn't had food in two days and i ate all of them ants and all i had to do what i had to do it was almost a life or death situation and uh so that's how that worked out but um so that's why you don't see them in stores, why most people don't know about them. But if you grow them on your own property where you can monitor them and you know when they're ripe, then you can harvest them. You can make ice cream. You can eat them raw. You can make custards. You can make pie fillings. There's all kinds of things you can make with them. So if you ever have the opportunity to try a paw, I definitely recommend it. And uh, you will not be disappointed. If you like mangoes and you like bananas, you will love pawpaws. Anyways, that's all. I know I got a little winded on this, but uh, thanks for watching. If you like this type of content, I've got over 500 videos I've uploaded about my homestead lifestyle that I've been living since 2015, long before the pandemic started. I was teaching people on Facebook how to make bread when stores were out of yeast during the early parts of the pandemic. Um, you know, I, I try to share knowledge. And I want to go ahead and mention this because it kind of drives me crazy. Um, there are some YouTube channels out there that they want to do this, what I call FUD. They want to, they want people to be worried. They, their message is basically fear, uncertainty, doubt for every single thing that happens in the environment or the political arena. Um, you know, and that kind of stuff gets to be annoying. So I try to avoid being that type of channel. I try to keep everything positive. Now, there are some times when I'm trying to teach people about the homestead lifestyle. For instance, I uploaded um, goat birthing videos and everybody enjoyed that, but they hated the fact that I lost one of my goats last year and I uploaded a video about that. But I did that because a lot of people that are getting into homesteading have this false pretense that everything just goes perfect and homesteading is a tough life um, there is as much bad as there is good and most people don't talk about the good so I try to give both sides of the story and I just want to give you a fair assessment if you're thinking about getting into homesteading how hard is it for you to grow raise harvest or hunt or forage 80% of all the food that you eat and I've been doing it for a few years now and just to give you an example, all during the pandemic, I think I've been to the store three times. And that was mostly to get like uh, paper products. <laughs> um, so again, thank you for watching. Subscribe, like this video if you like this kind of content. God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads. Thank you.